says the document showed Nick and his wife won't have their kids until they submit to random testing. That's his abhorrence. Let's get into what they say. So Nick, um, Nick confirmed these documents. And I would not even show this snippet unless he confirmed it. But he confirmed it. And I'm going to show the post that's out there publicly for everybody, posted by Jeremy of the Quartering. Uh, which, you know, his post reads, Nick Ricada has confirmed the documents are real. His nine-year-old daughter tested positive for cocaine. It reads exactly, after being placed uh, out of the house, the children were subject to hair follicle drug testing. All of the children, except for blank, blank is the name of his daughter, his nine-year-old daughter, tested negative. Blank, the daughter, tested positive for cocaine at a level over 5,000 with a cutoff of 500. So just to show you guys, and this is a um, this is a state testing kind of rubric here. Um, this is the drug panel uh, cutoff levels. Uh, now this one is a little bit, uh, it's February 2020, 20, uh, 2006, but I've been told it's fairly up to date. But these are the hair test panel cutoff levels. So it shows you kind of what they test. So for amphetamines, for cocaine, for opiates, uh, psilocydrin, uh, marijuana, or sorry, um, um, <laughs> phenylsalidine, sorry, I'm, I'm tripping here, uh, oxycodone, uh, hydrocodone, hydromorphine, uh, what, they, what they test here. So saying 500 is the confirmation. So it's confirmed at 500. She had 5,000. Well, what is 5,000 uh, consistent with? Well, for cocaine, 5,000 is consistent with medium use, which is daily or weekend use. Uh, so there's low, which is recreational, so meaning sometimes, medium, which is regular, and high, which is like at huge attic level. So something in the medium use level for cocaine. That is what was confirmed by Nick Ricada himself in terms of the document. Now, obviously, 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 Nick will contest the test. Obviously, Nick will say the test is bullshit. It's made up by the government. It's a government conspiracy. It was done wrong. It was uh, registering something that it shouldn't have registered because a lot of people, and look at me, look at me. I'm going to state the defense argument. Look at this. Look at this legal mindset sweeping for Nick. Um, they, some of the, the the Nick people have said that it could have been ADHD medication, and she might have scored positive because of ADHD medication. Now, from my understanding, and just looking at the panel here, uh, amphetamines, which it might be more similar to if it's ADHD medication, uh, would, are tested differently than cocaine, so they wouldn't register to me. It would be a different thing, right? So I, I don't think that checks out. But once again, I'm not a medical specialist. I don't, I, you know, I don't claim to be one. Uh, but that's a defensive argument. But otherwise, assuming this is accurate, if it is accurate, yes, it shows medium use of cocaine. That's really bad. By a nine year old. That looks really, really bad. If it's true. Right. And just to be clear, uh, Nick would have to fight the veracity of a hair follicle test and talking to Sean, you know, we talked about it before the show, uh, hair follicle tests are really hard to fight. And the case law in Minnesota, which I pulled up in a case here reading uh, about this one, this is a Minnesota case in the case of uh, uh, SSH, Reading the Children of SSH, a Minnesota Court of Appeals 2018 case, you know, talking about the use of hair follicle tests um, as foundation. Right, it appears that they're very widely accepted. It's hard to fight. It's going to be an uphill battle. So him him going there um, is is going to be a tough fight. It's going to be a really, really, really tough fight. But now that's what he's got to fight. He's got to fight against that, and that's in a CPS case, separate, separate and apart from the main case. All right. It says Nick is absolutely innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. This doesn't fly in the court of public opinion. We saw what we saw. Now, I, I, I asked to like find this clip and I couldn't find it. Uh, I did ask for people to um, for people to um, to try to uh, to try to send this to me, but I couldn't find it. But I remember in the Vic case, there was a point at which 
Nick made a comment to the extent of like public image matters or like public perception matters in the Vic case. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm having to get my divining rod and like go back into that. But public image definitely does matter and public perception does matter, right? Now, he may not care about it and that's fine, but I mean, it does matter in the long run. And, you know, obviously if you're thinking of running a business, if you're thinking of providing for your family in the future through that business, then yeah, eventually you might want to say, okay, well, how is this going to come out on the other side? Right. And if I am out here saying all this information and it's ultimately proven to be true, that how is that going to look versus if I just was quiet and was handling this and fighting this with my lawyer as he's entitled to do to the full extent of his law, to the, of the law, to protect his family, liberty, and to fight the government. There's a way to do that. We have a method to do that. Natasha said, just look at the discrepancy of the THC to other drugs. Like, dude, they need a new panel, and I think I know the sterility of obtaining the lab and lab testing calibrations. Hope it's not a false positive. So it could be a false positive, guys. It could be. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to pretend it can't be a false positive. Of course it could be, right? But he has to rebut this presumption now. The presumption is against him. So as a lawyer and, and just as an intellectually honest person, you have to say the facts are against Nick here. You can't spin this. There's no way to spin this and say, oh, yeah, it's good that his child tested positive for cocaine. There's no backflip you can do that makes this the fault of LawTube or, you know, Eric July or the kids or anybody else that, that you know, this is this is good for Nick or good for, you know, his overall case. Um, Rottweiler says, as a conspiracy as big as Nick Stan's claim would require him to be a big player in the Alex Jones or Nick Fuentes. Now going, he's nowhere near them. Shake my head. Yeah, no, it, that's that's what I don't see here. And what was he doing? What was he covering before? The only thing that I saw him covering before this was like Dear John and losing the Montograph case. The last, let's say this happened because the Coke was left out and the kid just got into it. Let's say that. I mean, you can say, is that being a negligent parent? I mean, in the eyes of law, it is, right? But there's personal moral judgment. Some people believe kids should be self sufficient at the age of six. We've heard people saying that, other lawyers saying that kids should be self sufficient at the age of six. Uh, I've heard people say that the 16 year old kid should take care of the rest of the kids. Um, you know, maybe some of that is moral, maybe some of that is parenting style, but there's a legal edge and that is using drugs in the presence of minors. And then that's in the criminal case, the CPS case, they're going to take into fact, okay, did the kids get into the drugs? Because that has a deeper impact on the CPS side. Garfield's Bizarre Adventure said, what are the odds the detectives are all subscribed to his streaming channels and they're actively watching? And hot is Hot Fuzz 69 a cop? I think the odds that they're watching is 100%. There's no way they're not watching. Now, are all of them watching? No. But at least one of them is, I'm sure. Samuel Williams, founding father, says, I personally had a false positive for Coke for an ad hoc med I took to over a year to prove it. No, and, and look, I'm acknowledging the fact it could be a false positive, you know? But then you got Nick Cruiser saying it could be a false positive. I could have in my possession the Holy Grail. Yes, you could. It's a presumption he must rebut. And once again, yes, the state does lie. The state does exaggerate. And I won't be surprised if the state exaggerated a little bit or at some points in the Nick Ricada case. Won't be surprised at all. But do I think it's 100% made up? No. And I think that is a stretch. Masaru Palma, thanks for the 20. Appreciate you. Dark, uh, Dark Lush said, for the test, do they test one or multiple sequentially? What is the SOP? Later seems responsible, first is acting for errors. I actually don't know. That's something I do not know. It's a good question. It's a very good question. Rano says, I'm reminded of when Niji leaked stuff during Doki's stream, and, can, and instead of continuing and maybe saying something stupid, she was smart enough to end the stream. Yes. You got to know when to talk and when to stay silent. And that's a very, very important skill. It's a critical skill. And it's important for people to know that, especially for streamers to know that, because there's a point at which you need to talk and a point at which you can stay quiet. Hugo XGC says, doesn't care for his public image for the sake of YouTube, but the advice were not to, for the sake of his YouTube channel, or did I miss something? Yeah, I, the thing is about that claim that he doesn't care about anything is that if he truly didn't care if you truly didn't care, you wouldn't respond, right? You would just follow the advice. That's what somebody who doesn't care does because they, they don't feel the need to respond.
Uh, Williams, the founding father, says it was a urine test, not hair, and one in one th 10,000 false positive on DOT tests. So not 100% the same. That is different. That is different. Myra for uh, 50 said the uh, for Swedish Krona said the government planted unfed kids with dirty clothes in Nick's house. Yeah, and and once again, the scope of the government conspiracy has to be so large, so large that it it is like a total local government you know takeover uh here to make everything 100 percent false I said i'm waiting for him to snap and go full soft set he can't be that stupid or can he well I, he's he's getting pretty close he's getting very 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 close uh to full uh to full soft set to full soft set um, and I'll bring up one more thing. I wasn't going to bring this up, but I want to, I guess I can show this real quick. Some people have mentioned this. And this was something that was sent to me. Now, I, upon talking about it with Sean, uh, I don't think this is likely to happen, but I do want to bring up, there is a separate Minnesota statute uh, regarding uh, regarding uh, neg neglect and endangerment of a child. And there's the possibility, it was raised to me that, hey, he could have a charge added. Kayla and um, Kayla and Nick could have a charge added uh, for this additional statute, 609, uh, for substantial harm to their physical, mental, or emotional health. This could be an additional felony that's added. But what Sean mentioned is, and this is a very salient point, is that the judge has a lot of latitude in sentencing and can slap can slap them pretty hard in sentencing so it's probably not necessary to add that and that's probably not something i would predict oh yeah for sure that's going to happen could it happen maybe because we've got these additional facts regarding the child the potential use right is it possible yes i think is it likely likely no